In this video I want to show you my mixing workflow on the MPC in standalone mode. That applies to the MPC1, MPC X, the MPC Live, Live 2 of course and the MPC Touch. So I'm gonna go through all the steps from a raw mix which is all over the place uh, to a polished finished track. We're gonna talk about EQ, compression, sense, returns, submixes and a lot more. So all in all this step by step video is about how to utilize the functions of the MPC in order to get a great sounding mix. Let's do it. What's up, this is Marcello. If you're interested in beat making videos, tutorials and more, consider subscribing. Also, if you're interested in my music or a free drum kit, check out the description. Let's dive in. Alright, before we start mixing, let's get the theory out of the way. I added the timeline with all the chapters so you can jump to a certain part. But the theory part is also very important, so let's start by defining what makes a good mix. A good mix should be tall, wide and deep. So tall means it should, if possible, fill the whole uh, frequency spectrum from the low end all the way to the highs. Of course there are always exceptions, but most of the time uh, good mixes are spread across the whole frequency spectrum. For example, if you want a huge low end, uh, the mid range and the highs are going to be smaller. And also the other way around, so you can't have everything, uh, keep that in mind. Because every element takes up a certain amount of headroom and there's only so much headroom until it hits zero. And the low end for example has a lot of energy and takes up a lot of space. So it's a little bit like solving a puzzle and you have to decide what elements are the most important elements of your beat or track and then prioritize them in the mix. And ask yourself with every element or with every new element that you're adding to, the, to a beat if this element is really contributing to the, um, to the vibe of the beat or is it just another thing just to fill something up. If you're making beats for a singer or rapper um, just keep in mind to leave enough space for them. Because most of the time uh, the voice is one of the most uh, important elements of the, of the song. Let's get to the next point which is width. A lot of people are listening to music in stereo so a good mix should also have its uh, elements spread across the stereo field. So horizontally. Kick drum and bass are usually in the middle and it's good to make everything under 150 or 100 hertz or so in mono. Also the rest uh, of the drums work well in the center because if the drums are panned too extreme to the, to the sides um, the beat could lose uh, its groove. But there are also very groovy mixes with um, kick and snare in the middle and a percussion loop on the side or something like that. So just try out things. Keys or pads work well if you pan them to the sides or if you put some kind of stereo widening effect on them. Lead vocals stay in the middle most of the times. Background vocals uh, work well if they are panned. So these are some basics but you can also experiment. The same goes for a, a lead synthesizer for example uh, that's doing a solo. solo. So this should be in the middle as well because it's, it's important. In this section of the song this is the most important uh, part. So it should not be moved to, uh, to the side or something like that. But you can also you know, play with some panning. Alright, also keep in mind um, if you make a, um, a mix wider, um, it will open up and maybe feel more free. But it can also lose its punch. So, so always keep in mind if you do something there will be consequences. So we are still in the width. Um, chapter. Here it's, it's very um, important that the mix works in mono as well because the listener is not always located perfectly between two speakers. Worst case is that they will be far closer to one speaker meaning they will lose a big portion of the stereo signal. That's why it really makes sense to check your mix in mono from time to time. I usually uh, mix a big portion of my beats in mono and then um, do the, fi the finishing touches uh, in stereo. If you mix in stereo you can just move one instrument to the side to make space for a different one. 
But afterwards, if you're listening to this mix uh, in mono, it could be that those instrument's frequencies are masking each other. That means if two elements live in the same frequency range and one of them is louder, our brain uh, just fades out the quieter element and it disappears. In addition, phasing issues can appear. For example, when you have two identical waveforms, for example sine wave, and place them exactly on top of each other, they will amplify. But if you shift them 180 degrees, the phase of one sine wave is going up and the other one is going down. So they will cancel each other out. That means there's going to be silence. So this can be a problem, for example, if you're using the house effect, so like a stereo delay, um, and then make the mix in mono, it could be that those elements that had the Haas effect earlier are gone. So um, if you want to know more about this subject, the, the face cancellation, uh, just um, I, I put a video in, in the description. So my point is if you switch to mono from time to time or mix the whole thing in mono, you will hear when those issues uh, occur and you can deal with them. So if you mix in mono you only have two dimensions, so you lose the width dimension. You are forced to make frequencies work using an EQ to carve out a, a dedicated space for each element and also moving sounds in the third dimension as well. That brings us to depth, which is our third dimension. I, I hope I pronounce it correctly, I hate this word, depth. If I listen to my beats from a couple of years ago, I often notice they sound flat and two-dimensional because back then I didn't uh, pay any attention to depth. Just imagine a room and ask yourself which sounds should appear up front and which should uh, move to the back. If you found out your most important element or elements, then you can also prioritize them uh, using the depth, using this dimension. So just bring it up front. For example, vocals, bring them up front and move the, move the melody to the back a little. So you can place sounds to the front by making them louder, more transient rich and brighter. So to push a sound backwards you can reduce the volume, soften the attack or roll off some of those high frequencies. Also using a reverb or a delay can obviously help you shift the sound back in the mix. The larger the space around the sound the further away. Alright I hope you're still awake. Um, we are almost done with the theory. Uh, just a few more important points. If you're new to mixing, it's really helpful to listen to tracks which are in the same genre as yours. Of course, professionally mixed tracks, just as a reference. For example, how loud is the snare compared to the kick? How bright or dark is the mix? You know, just to tune your ears. Also, it's very important to know your room. So you should listen to professional mixes in the same space or in the same place as you mix your own music. So you know how it should sound. I mix my music with headphones and there it's the same. Important to know your headphones to listen to a lot of music on them. So I think it's really important uh, to learn how to listen and analyze. How's a good low end supposed to sound in my room, uh, on my system, uh, on my headphones? And then you can decide what you have to do in order to get there um, with your own music. As you can see it's getting dark already. So I'm, I'm talking a lot, but I think it's important and you can also just jump into the mixing part um, using the timeline. I'm sure if you internalize those uh, things, it can be a good roadmap or a good compass while you're mixing. Of course, the theory is nothing without the practice and the experience. Of course, um, mixing itself is, is, is a great practice. But also if you're not mixing, you can train your ears by just listening to great mixes, great sounding mixes on your headphones or on good speakers and just analyzing uh, those mixes and just listening really carefully. Just analyze uh, certain parts, you know, how does the low end sound, did they pan their hi-hats, um, where is the main melody located, does it move around the, the stereo field maybe, where are the, the vocals. What kind of reverb are they using? Which is the lowest element? Is the kick sitting on top of the bass or is the bass sitting on top of the kick? Um, all, those, all those questions can bring like a more analytical um, view on the whole thing. 
Okay, before you start mixing, ask yourself what are the most important elements of the track and what feeling do I have if I listen to the track or to the beat and then try to figure out what elements give you that feeling or a certain feeling and then later in the mix you can highlight certain elements because you like the feeling that they give you. So for example a violin that plays a very uh, tragic and sad melody can be moved a little to the back maybe with some reverb that um, underlines the, the the tragic sad ex atmosphere or something like that you know just get away from all those technical stuff and get into the to the emotion to the to the vibe to the feeling uh, I think uh, Dr. Dre once said that uh, a good indicator of, of, of a good mix for him is, is him just moving his uh, body so even if the mix is not technical perfect if it gives you a certain feeling and the feeling is maybe highlighted by some mixing decisions you're you're, you're done the mix is, is finished okay one more technical thing always mix the crowdiest uh, part of your song so most of the time is, is the hook because then you really have to make sure those elements work um, together. Okay now, let's dive in. It's really getting dark. Alright, so let's see if we have named everything correctly. Um, one sequence, the first sequence is the intro, then hook, part one, part two, part three, but all that matters right now is uh, the sequence two, which is the hook, where all the elements are are, are, are in. Um, so we got track one, which which were all the drums on one track. I exploded this track, so it's muted now, and all the drums are um, on separate tracks. So kick, heads, clap, shaker, open head. And on track two we got the flute, then a bass, then a violin, yeah, violin, a violin. Um, and on track 11 we have some effects and a lead. So I'm going to play you the song, um, or the hook. <laughs> It's a very old uh, track or beat of mine. It's like two years old or something. And the mix is a total catastrophe. So I, I, I took all the effects off and you know, so. It's important to have your programs named. So we got bass and also the tracks. We got bass, violin, drums, effects and lead. And if you go to track mix, you can see all those programs are named as well, so that's uh, a big help to just um, keep the overview. Um, as long as we are here in track mix, let's go to master and let's just look at the overall level. It's uh, clipping it's into the red. So let's bring down the all the levels of the programs so let's go back to programs um, and now let's just bring down all the levels maybe 10 dbs one I don't know what this is. Okay. Let's go to the master again. It's way better. So now we have enough headroom. Um, make sure the volume stays the same before and after you insert an effect. Um, so always A, B before and after the effect because we want we don't want to clip it um, again we want to we want to keep the headroom because in the end in the mastering um, we can just bring it up to uh, zero okay now let's um, okay now let's see 
what else we got on this uh, track mix um, page. So we got programs, that's really cl that's clear, and then we got returns. We got four of them, um, and you can send, you can insert effects. So return one, you can insert an effect or four effects, and then after that you can send a certain portion of the signal of a program or a sound into this or into all all of the returns. So for example, let's set up the first return track. It really makes sense to put a reverb, like a small room reverb on return one, for example. So let's um, search for a reverb, go to air and air reverb. This is cool. And let's just um, make it uh, a basic small um, mix all the way up to 100. And then here, where it says early reflections, you can let's, um, let's select something like a like a room. Okay, so so we set up this uh, basic reverb, small reverb, and we can tweak it later. Setting up this reverb as a return enables you to send a lot of different um, sounds or programs of the same uh, beat into the same room or place them into the same room um, without having to insert a reverb on every um, on every sound um, which is very heavy on the CPU and also yeah you can save your insert your insert effect slots um, okay, and after the reverb, it also makes sense to put an EQ to cut some highs and some lows. So you can do that also here, but I don't like this uh, layout very much, so I'm, I'm just gonna take the next insert and insert uh, an EQ. And let's just, here we are on the high low cut page, and let's just cut some highs and also maybe enable enable and maybe cut some lows too so maybe 300 or something like that I'm not sure you can just try around um, the reason why I'm cutting the highs and the lows is that if you send a lot of elements um, to that reverb it can muddy up the lows and get in the way of the bass and the kick and the same with the highs, can, it can get in the way of, of certain high um, elements in the mix. So yeah, it makes sense to keep the reverb um, tail in the middle. Um, okay, so let's go back. We set up our first return. Let's just make the next one um, Let's just make the next one um, a basic medium with mix all the way to 100 and early re reflections on small or medium cha chamber, 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 chamber. Um, okay, also let's set up an EQ to that one. rather a uh, high cut and a low cut. Okay. Um, um, okay. And of course, first it takes time setting the whole uh, return tracks up, but you can save the project as a template. Um, this project, for example. So you won't have to set up the returns uh, every time all over again. Okay. So, for now, let's just leave it with the two returns. You can, for example, make the next uh, two uh, like a delay or something, um, like a eight delay and a, a quarter delay or something like that. Okay, next we have submixes. Let's look at them. Um, these are like buses or in Ableton Live, it's called groups. Um, using submixes you can structure all the individual elements of your song into bigger groups. So we have eight of them. 
So, so for us, let's make submix one for the low end. So for all your bases, if you have several, or the kick and the bass. So you can decide if you put the kick into the low end submix or into the drums submix. But I like to put the kick and the bass into the same sub uh, mix. Submix two could be for all the percussive elements and the drums. Of course, you can also make uh, this for the drums, so for the hi-hat and the uh, snare, and maybe submix 3 for, for all the percussion. And what's left are all the melodic elements of the track, which I'm going to route to submix 3. So let's do low end, drums, percussion, and melodic or music. And of course, if you have a, a vocal a singer or something, then the lead vocals is, a, is its own submix and the background vocals should be its own submix. Okay, um, so next let's find out how to route the stuff to the submixes. That's part of the preparation of the mix. Um, so let's go to programs again. And now let's just take the drums, accept the kick and route the drums to submix one. So let's select the drum program, go to root, and here you can decide if it's going to out two, one, one, and two. We don't want to go out there, so we select with the jog wheel, select sub one, uh, sub two, because the drums belong to submix two. But we want to have the kick on submix one. So let's go to main. So let's go to uh, to the drum program and now let's go to pad mix. Okay. It's a little bit Okay, and here we got the drum sounds. So we want the kick to go to submix 1 to the low end. So we go to root. We are in pad mix. And now the destination of the kick is to program, but we don't want it to go to the program because the program is going to submix two. We want to go we want it to go to submix one. Okay, now the kick is coming out of submix one. It's now getting louder because um, the program, because I turned the level of the program down. So now uh, let's just lower the level of the, of the kick. Now let's continue with the other elements. So next we want to root the melodic elements to submix 3. So let's go back to track mix. Let's, let's start with the flutes. Select it and choose submix 3, then the bass is submix 1 because it's the low end. Um, this is empty. The violin is also submix 3. Effects, let's make it submix 4. And the lead is also submix 3. Okay. So now we have the track structured into 3 or into 4 if you count the effects into four um, groups that we can control. So if you want to uh, lower the, the bass a little bit or the kick or the low end, the whole low end, then we can just lower the volume of the whole submix. That's pretty cool. So we prepared everything. So now we can start the actual mixing part. So I always start with the kick. So let's solo the drum program and we got, we got only the drums. So now let's go into the drum program to pad mix. So um, menu, and here we got the pad mixer. Or for MPC one, just double tap um, track mix. So let's solo the kick. It's pretty thin. So I could just um, make a lot of sound design and, and EQing and compression to fatten up the kick, but I, I can also layer it with, with a bigger kick, with a bigger sample, more bass maybe, 
that's the easy way or the, the, the quick way, the quicker way. In this case, it would take me some time to treat the kick with some EQs and, and, and compression. So let's just put another sample on top of this sample. So I loaded up another kick sample, this one. Um, let's also route it to sub 1. Very, very loud. So we got those two kicks. Let's go to program edit. We want every time this kick um, is triggered, we want this to be uh, played at the same time. So here on the master page of program edit, we got um, sim simultaneous play. So every time this kick or this pad is triggered, pad nine, choose pad nine, is triggered also. So you can see. Let's go to pad mix again. And now let's just adjust the levels a little bit. Let's bring down this. I actually like the uh, sound of this kick. So let's bring in the bass as the next element. So let's just press play. Go to track mix. Or rather go to track mute and mute all the other elements. Let's mute everything except the bass and the kick. So every track. So the kick, kick drum, hats, clap, shaker, violin, um, flutes, leads, open hats. Now we got the bass and the kick playing. You have to decide which element of, of, of both should be lower because there can be only one lowest instrument. So in this case I would go with the kick because the bass is played more frequently um, and the kick is like the bass of the whole thing. We can of course also make them both very low and then add uh, the mother ducker, for example, and then make the bass stuck every time the kick hits. But in this case, I like the little transient of the bass. Let's let's go to the bass and add some uh, EQ to just the bass. So let's go through the EQ. Um, so we got low, low mid, high mid and high. You can adjust the frequency where it's um, where the EQ works here. And then we have the Q factor, the gain and the type of EQ. So the Q factor um, or the Q stands for quality factor that defines the bandwidth of the frequencies um, that are affected by the EQ. So the lower the Q, so for example, Let's make the low mid Q very, very low, so 0 0.4. The broader the bandwidth will be, so for so let's just, we don't have the visual EQ. That would be a cool update for some time, like a visual uh, EQ. But that's also very cool. I, I, I also like this kind of EQ because if you don't see the curves, then you, you use your ears uh, a little more and and that's what counts, uh, in my opinion. So let's just draw how an uh, equalizer look, looks like. You can also, if you have a DAW or something, just play around with the EQ in there. So you can just memorize how the EQ actually looks. So here we got, let's say, 100 Hz. And here we got uh, 10K. So here, so this, actually. And here's zero and, and here's, uh, let's say, 12 dBs and here's minus 12 dBs. So, so the low mid is at frequency 200, so let's make it at 100. If you set the Q to 10, 
and the gain to 12 or to 6 or to 12. Let's set it to 12 just to show. It will look something like this 100, 12, and a very uh, steep curve. So something like this maybe. And if you lower the Q factor, it, it will broaden the whole, the bandwidth, so it, it will look like this. I hope this is somehow clear, but you can also Google this. Um, there's a lot of good um, YouTube tutorials out there. I think a good rule of thumb is boost wide, cut narrow. A lot of people do that. And now let's let's go to let's go to the type. It, that only affects the high and the low. That can be either a shelf EQ or a bell EQ. Those high mid and low mid EQs are both uh, bell EQs. So bell means of course this one or this one. So this is the bell. If you increase the gain, it's going up. And if you decrease the gain, it's going down. And here we can choose if the high and the low should be a bell or a shelf. It's automatically on shelf. So let's draw a, a shelf real, real quick, real quick. We get 100 hertz, we get 10k, we get 12 dB, minus 12 dB. And the shelf would look like this. If it's at 100, some, some, something like that. It's like an S and up there it will look like this. And if you if you increase the Q, the Q factor, it will go like this. It will be more steep. It will go up a little bit and then down. I think it's really important that you know how those curves look like. Um, and here we got this section high low cut. That's also very important. So you have to turn it on that they, they are working. So for example, this will make a low cut at 100 hertz. Usually you should make a low cut at around 30 or 20, something like that, between 20 and 30. I always do it like 25 hertz. And here we got the type of the of the curve. It's normally around 12 dB. So 6 dB is very smooth. It's a very smooth curve. It's a very smooth curve. So it's like, it's maybe like this. If this is the, you know, maybe here is 100 and here is 25. So yeah, it's a very smooth curve. Then we got 12 which is a little bit more, a little bit steeper. Then we got 18, even more, and 24, even more. Um, so you get what I'm saying. Um, I think it's, it's, it's okay to, to leave it at 12 or 6 or something like that. Um, all right. But you can also mess with that. Just try something, try, just try out things. So this was some theory. Let's go back to the to the sound we actually want to we actually want to edit. So let's take off the EQ. I think the bass, right? So let's just see what we can do. Okay. I actually want to bring more bass into the bass. If you increase some of the upper frequencies on, on the bass, the, the transient will be more uh, present, yeah? because this is a high frequency thing. Let's make a low cut, just to make sure. Yeah, at 20. That's, that's cool. Okay, now let's look at the kick. Go into the drum. Let's for that we have to go to pad mix.
and we want to edit this kick took the kick we added on top of the original so let's go to EQ and let's just see what, what sounds good let's put it to 100 I think that's decent, that's a decent low end. You know, just stay with the low end as long as it takes. So now let's go to track mix again. And now let's go to the sub mixes, sub mix one. Let's put another EQ and a compressor on sub mix one, but maybe we can put a channel strip on sub mix one. So insert, let's go to dynamics. And here we got the channel, the air channel strip, which um, includes the com a compressor, an EQ, and a gate. But we don't need the gate. But the compressor and the EQ is pretty good. It's pretty cool to have in one um, slot. So let's go to the channel strip. So here we got. We we can decide if it if it should be on. So EQ should be on, gate off, compression off for now. And here we have two pages. We are on um, we are on the gate compression page, but we want to start with the EQ. So let's go to, to the EQ page. So here we got the high shelf. So this is a shelf. You can't change it. A mid. This is a bell, and the low shelf. And here we got a high pass filter. So it's a little smaller than the air power EQ, but it's also a very decent EQ. So let's just what we can change. Maybe a little more bass. Let's make the Q factor very low. That means the, the bell is very wide. And let's also make it cut it around 20 hertz. Okay, so this is this is without, and this is with. It's definitely a little louder, so let's bring down the output. It's also very important to to check your levels um, before you go into uh, effect and after the effect. So it should be the same level of, of loudness. Um, so let's turn on the compression compression. Um, now that brings us to the compressor, but maybe for that let's use the air compression, the air compressor, the big one, because we will come back to this channel strip later. But for explaining the compression, let's go with the air compressor because it shows a little bit more. So the compressor is used to control the dynamic range um, of, 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 a, of a sound or of a song. So the span between the softest and the loudest sounds. And it can, can also help glue things together. So in this case, I want to glue the bass and the kick a little bit more together. Here it's all already working too much. Um, we want to yeah, bring the, the bass and the kick 
more closer together maybe. I can't really describe it, but you will hear it. I used to think you should be able to hear big changes after adding a compressor, but if you hear a little, a slight change to the better, then it's then the compress then the compressor um, did a good job. So how to start with the compressor? Um, first, we want to set the threshold so the compressor will be triggered, but not too much. So this is too much. You, you can see here the yellow, the yellow thing, the yellow meter is the gain reduction. So the compressor is, is reducing the sound, and it by by this. That much, so that's too much. So if we so if we tweak the threshold, okay, this is too much, obviously. adjust the output. We just want to trigger the compressor ever so slightly. You see here? I think that could be enough for, for, for us. Adjust the output. Okay, and now, and now let's set the ratio. If you want the compressor to work a lot, if you uh, if you set it to 100, it's it, it's almost like a limiter. So it, it will it will not let through the sounds that peak that go over a, a certain frequency. Uh, so for us, I think a ratio of three something like that is is, is okay. We just want to. So we just want a little a subtle uh, effect. So, and the output is, is clear. So how 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 loud is the sound coming out of the compressor? Um, because the compressor just lowers the sound. Okay, now the mix determines how much percent of the signal will be affected by the compressor. So how much of the signal, which is the bass and the kick together, you know, because it's the, because this effect uh, is sitting on the group or on the submix, on the low end submix, on submix one, how much of this signal will be affected by this compressor? So if we, for example, want a parallel compression, then you can just set the, the mix to uh, 50 maybe. So 50% of the signal will be affected by the compressor and 50% will be left alone. But that kind of percentage doesn't work with those uh, settings. So you would need more extreme settings to get an effect out of the parallel compression. So we are just gonna leave the, the mix at 100. And here we got the knee. The knee determines how the compressor um, changes the signal or something like that. Soft knee, hard knee, just Google it, but it's not so important. I'm just going to leave it alone at uh, 50. Um, what's more important is the attack and the release. So the attack determines how fast the compressor starts working after, the, after it's triggered. So after the signal comes in and triggers the compressor, how fast after that the compressor starts working. So if you set the attack to all the way to a very fast attack, um, the compressor will start working very fast. So you will be able to control a sound very good. So if you want, so for example, the transient of a kick will be reduced with a very fast attack. So if you want the transient of a kick to be more hard and more, um, more punchy, then go with the slow attack because then the compressor waits and lets the transient through and then it starts working. So it will, compress everything after the transient. So just let's just hear how a, a fast compression sounds like. So attack very fast. To hear the effect better, let's just 
set the thresh threshold to uh, a more extreme setting. You can see the kick. It's not punchy at all. So let's compare it to a longer attack, longest attack setting. It gets punchier the longer the attack setting is uh, on the compressor. Um, you can also see it in the in the reduction. You see, it reacts. It reacts very quick, and we make the attack longer. It's not reacting that quick, and the release determines how long until the compressor stops working. So, for example, fast attack, long release, this is the ultimate control, because you will control the, the sound from the beginning until the end. You can see this uh, yellow meter is not going back, because the release is so slow. And you can see very slow. This is how slow the release is. So, so it will... Yeah, now the compressor s stops working. So if we set a very fast release... You can hear the sound is... The, the sound is clipping because the control is not there anymore. The release is so, is so fast that the sound will be just compressed for a, a short, uh, for, for a really short time and then the compressor st uh, stops working. So, you can see, it jumps back very fast. So fast um, and, and then, and for more punch and, and your kick drums, make the attack very long and the release very short. Because that's just the best setting for a, a punchy kick drum. If you want more control, and if you want to control uh, like s individual transients that peak out, if you want to smooth out things, then you just make it uh, make it some less extreme settings, you know. So for us. Let's find the, the right attack and release settings and then bring back the threshold to our normal thing. Okay, I think that's alright. Let's bring back the threshold to 14. I sometimes do a, a blind test after I add a, a, an effect, especially a compressor, because you can't always hear a compressor, and you tend to say, okay, with the compressor it should sound better, but sometimes it sounds worse. So after I set the, the effect, um, the settings, I um, sometimes do a blind A-B test, so I just house the levels. Just adjust the levels a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to hit play or press, press play and then I'm going to close my eyes and just tap on the on off button, on the bypass button sometime so I forgot, so, so I'm going to forget if it's on or off and then I, I really hear the difference. So. I'm going to Okay, so I, 
I think it has a little bit more punch if the compressor is on, but the difference is very, very um, subtle. It's not so. It's not very good to make this with the touchscreen. It would be better if you have a button on off or bypass button. I think I'm happy with the low end for now. Okay, now let's go to main and let's just look at the drums, kick drum. Let's look at the pad mix of the drum program. And let's just unsolo those two. Because we don't, I, I'm not sure why we soloed them, but. Okay, now let's go to track, track mute. Because we want to bring in the next element, that is the clap. Okay, now we're gonna hear how the clap sounds in context with the low end, and we're gonna uh, make some changes. I think it could have more punch, but I like the sound actually. Uh, so now let's go to to pad mix and let's see where the clap clap is. Ah, over here. Okay. Now let's go into the EQ on this pad on the clap pad. EQ. Air Para EQ, that's the only EQ I, I, I use actually. Hardly ever use the other ones. So now let's start by making a, a low cut. I don't know what kind of low end rumble is, is in this clap, but just to make sure, let's make a, a, a low cut, but let's make it 6 dB, so a very smooth uh, cut. Okay, the sound is getting thinner, so we don't want that. We don't want to hear uh, the, the low cut. We just want to cut some rumble that we don't actively hear, but which could be there and which could get in the way um, of the kick and the bass. Okay. Now let's um, bring out the core frequency of the of the clap a little bit more. Um, first, we have to find it. So let's just do that by taking the the low mid uh, band and just increasing the gain a little bit. And I also want not a, a very broad. Um, Q factor, but a very na uh, pretty narrow Q factor. So let's let's go with five maybe. And now let's go to the frequency and let's sweep through the frequencies, um, and let's find the the core frequency of the of the clap so we can emphasize that. This is the clap, right? Like that. Bring it back a little bit. Okay. So this is before. And this is after. A little bit more body, a little bit more weight. I think let's not do anything else. Let's just add let's just add a compressor to add more punch. Um, for that we are gonna go with um, a very slow attack or a pretty slow attack. Let's just see. But let's for for, for this one let's use the let's use the the channel strip, the compressor from the channel channel, stri channel strip. So we get to use this too. Um, get, we don't need the gates, we don't need the EQ, compressor, where is it, here, 
So here we have gate and compressor. We did the EQ earlier. And here's the compressor compressor uh, section. So it doesn't have as many um, parameters as the air compressor. So what's missing is the knee, which is not so important. So just the threshold. That's you can see it, it's getting compressed. It's, it's it's getting quieter. Here you can see the compression, the reduction. We want to make sure to to let through the the initial transient of the clap, so a longer attack. You see it, it gets a little bit more punch. This is just, this is the fastest attack. No, no punch and then and fast release. I like that. So let's uh, hear it before and after. Here is before. And here is after. It's very subtle, but I think it's it's more it's it's tighter now. It's more has a little bit more punch. Okay, so that's enough for the clap. Um, let's. Let's add the next one. Let's go to track mute. Let's add um, let's add the the hats. Okay, the hats definitely need more high end, less low end. Maybe make them a little bit thinner. Let's just um, go to pad mix again. Here are the claps. Uh, the pad is selected. Let's. Put, let's start with the um, let's start with the, the EQ. We can use a different EQ for for this one because I think we don't need as many parameters. So we don't need um, we don't need the para EQ, which has four bands. Um, let's just go. Let's just go with uh, uh, with the air kill EQ. I think this could help us just to uh, to enhance the the high end. Okay, let's add more high. Let's cut some lows. The lows will be killed if, if the kill is on, and if it says through, it will let th uh, through the, the 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 lows. But we want to kill the lows actually. What's offset? Okay, before and after, so let's start with before and after. So it has a little bit more presence now, it's not so muddy in the, in the mid-range. Um, okay, let's go back, that's enough I think for the, for the hi-hats. Okay, before we continue, let's just listen to the mix in mono, as I said before, I always mix the first 70% or so in mono or at least I switch it to mono uh, here and then just listen to it in mono to make sure it, it also works in, in just one dimension 
or in just two dimensions in um, uh, in depth and in um, tallness. So for that, let's let's go to track mix, go to the master, and let's just put um, modulation air. And let's put a stereo width plugin on the master. Let's go in, and we and here we just have to lower the width from 100% to zero. So let's listen it. So let's listen to it um, while we do it. So as you can hear, it, it's getting very narrow. It sounds okay in mono. We are in mono now, so let's not forget that, but let's continue. Let's go back to uh, track mute and bring in the next element. Which is the shaker. Let's just go to pad mix. Here's the shaker. Let's just... Yeah. Let's just um, add an EQ to make it a little bit. I like I like it. I like how it sounds. But let's let's add more presence to it. So let's let's just add the para EQ. Make a, a low cut because we don't need the low frequencies uh, of the shaker. So as you can hear, the, the hi-hats are high. Um, the, the clap is pretty mid-high and the shaker should have its own place. make a high cut also to remove some highs of the shaker so the the hi-hat has um, enough space up there okay now let's go to the EQ and let's just that let's go back let's make it louder also make the hi-hat louder Most important thing in a, in a mix uh, is, is leveling, so you can forget that real easy or real quickly because you just dive into the EQ and the compressor and just forget the forget setting the levels right. So that's actually the most important thing. Now let's go to uh, track mix and let's go to sub mix sub mixes and now let's go to sub mix two, which is our um, drum sub mix. Let's just mute submix one. Okay, I like that, but let's tighten up the whole um, thing, the whole mix, the whole submix. Um, yeah, let's add some EQ and compression to the group, to the drums, to the overall drum submix. But let's bring in the low end for that. And let's bring the level down of the low end. The whole low end of submix one, and now let's go to submix two and insert maybe air enhancer. 
Ne, no, maybe uh, uh, just a para EQ. Just to enhance some frequencies. Now let's go to the compressor to just glue all those drum elements together. Let's use the, the air compressor again. Um, okay, compressing a lot now, we don't want that. And also the output. We just want to glue the sounds together maybe make them a little bit more uh, yeah more warm maybe as you can see the clap is just triggering the thing let's uh, set the attack a little longer to let the clap through it's better release fast Maybe mix down a little bit. So this is before. And this is after. It's a little bit more in your face. That's all right, let's uh, go back. And now let's unmute the low end again. I like that. It's pretty punchy. I like that. So let's bring in some other elements. Let's bring in some melodic elements, maybe. Um, the flute. Okay. The flute is way too loud. Let's go to track mix and um, go to programs. And let's just turn down the flute. What's wrong with the flute? Next, let's apply some EQ to the flute because we want to just make a low cut to leave enough space for the low end, for the kick and the bass to just live there. So let's just add an EQ, EQ filter and EQ, para EQ. So high low cut. So enable the low cut and make it. 6 dB, so a very smooth musical low cut. And now it's just here, listen to it and sweep through the frequencies or go higher. And as soon as we can hear that the flute is changing in, in sound, we, we just back up a little. Okay, way too thin. I like that. Let's go back to the EQ section and let, let's just bring out some, some some of the core frequencies. For that, let's sweep. Keep in mind, we also have the violin playing at the same time of the flute and we also have a lead so let's just see that the flute lives in, in, in the, in the mid-range I think decrease some of the muddy frequencies uh, it's like 300, 200, 300. But make it a very narrow Q. Okay, 
Okay, so let's do a, a before after. Let's go back and just solo the flute. And let's do a before after. So this is before. And this is after. So it's a little bit more defined, a little bit more present. Um, okay. So I soloed this now, but in general, you, you, you shouldn't solo too much because even if a sound on its own sounds good, that doesn't mean it, it will sound good in the mix um, in, in, in the context with the other instruments. So sometimes uh, uh, the snare has to be very thin, but on its own it's, it's too thin maybe, but in a mix it, it makes total sense. Let's just check the master levels. We are good. We are uh, we are still very good. Let's let's um, let's go back to programs, and now let's bring in the next element. Uh, track mute, and let's bring in the violin. Okay, we have to lower the level a little bit of the violin. Actually, let's just try to send the flute into our our uh, return uh, uh, into the the second one, maybe the chamber. So let's um, send, go to send, and here you can just send the flute in there. So let's solo the flute just to hear it. So now we are sending the whole thing into the return. This is actually return one, and if we press again here, now we are sending it to return two. Let's just see how it sounds in return two. So here we have the the bigger space, maybe the I think the chamber. Let's actually go to the returns and adjust it a little bit. make it a little smaller okay but I think I liked the I think I like the return one better so let's take Let's, let's just not send it to uh, return 2, but only to 1. Let's go to 1. And let's deactivate the solo. Send it a little bit to the back, so that's pretty good. Th that's also a, a good um, way to make space or make room for uh, a singer or a rapper. And keep in mind, we are still in mono, so we we are now reduced. We don't have the width. Um, we can't just pan it to the right and get it out the way. So we we have to um, just move it to the back a little bit to make space. I like that. So let's um, let's see what the violin is up to. Okay, let's add. Here we we got two effects, but those are um, production effects, so creative effects. If we turn them off. Oh, I like. Filter gate is on, but let's just 
deactivate it. I, I, I like the diff delay. Let's add an EQ. Because the violin is now at the same frequency range as the flute. Or they overlap and we don't want that so... We just want to move it a little bit higher. Maybe cut some, some of those mid-range frequencies. Let's go to our go-to EQ. Let's make the, the low cut. As always. Let's make it 6 because 6 is just more... Yeah, it's smoother. Okay. Defined. It has its own space now. Um, but let's still just emphasize some other frequencies. Let's also add, let's also send the violin into some of those reverbs. Let's go to send. Maybe return to. Let's add the next element, which is the lead. Or oh, we we forgot the open hi hat. Oh. So let's go back to pad mix, the drum program. Here we, here we get it. Let's just make a low cut. That's all we need, I think. Maybe let's send it to, to a room. And while we are at it, let's just send the Clap to a room, maybe? And the head? No. But maybe the shaker. But maybe the shaker, let's send it to, to, to the bigger room. Take the return. Okay. Um, now let's go to track mute and let's bring in the lead. Okay, this is a little bit all over the place. Lower the, the level.
Actually, let's just take out some notes of the lead because it, it really overlaps with those other melodic elements. And we are also producers, not only mixers, so we, we can just take them out, those notes, because we have the creative freedom. Okay, so let's go to the program of the lead. Let's go to grid. Let's just see what notes we are playing there. Take out those two. Always those first ones. Let's go back to track mix. Let's add a, an EQ to the lead. doesn't get in the way of the of the violin and if you remove the highs it automatically uh, puts this lead in in the background so so it, it, it moves it um, to the back so let's also um, send it to a return to a space to our uh, uh, space Now let's go to master and let's just make it stereo again. Let's hear it in mono. And I'm going to switch it to stereo. Before you could just uh, hear a, a, a muddy thing and now every element has its own space and you can you can hear each element on its own now let's add an EQ to all those musical or, or all those melody instruments low cut some final touches to the to the program or to the whole melodic uh, thing maybe widen the whole thing let's just do that let's add a stereo width Let's just add a add an EQ to the master. Normally do that. Just make a another low cut at 20. Okay, so the mixing is done. So normally before I get to the master, I just refresh my ears listening to some reference tracks I that I really like and that I and that are similar to this one just from, from the sound. Because I spent so much so much time with this mix now, I can't be really sure about if I still get the balance the balances right. So it could be that the low end is too too big, but I just got used to it hearing it the whole time. So that's why I just refresh the whole thing by listening to some ref reference tracks. 
professionally mixed. And after that, I can go uh, back um, and and do some EQ adjustments, maybe if needed, a compressor, maybe or um, maybe some adjustments to the width of the whole thing, and maybe some uh, uh, maybe some saturation, maybe, but just to add a little warmth or something. Yeah. Okay, so now let's listen to some music. We are not going to do it together because because of copyright reasons. Okay, now let's listen to my song again. Okay. We are missing some low end maybe. So let's start with the with the shelf, with the low EQ, and just bring it up a little bit. Keep in mind, on the master um, channel, every change you make is, is to the whole uh, track, so you have to make much smaller changes because, yeah, you don't want to change the whole sound of the of the of the beat because you're you're already happy with the mix, but just. Bring in more low end, maybe. Without. And with. A little bit, just 0 0.9 uh, dB. And low cut, of course. Be careful with the low cuts on the whole thing, it can also change the whole balance of the song, so just listen. If it sounds a little off, then don't make the low cut. Okay. I like that. Let's add, not tube, tube drive, but maybe lo-fi. First I'm going to do the changes, just uh, dial in some, some something and then I'm, go I'm going to bring the mix down. So just a little portion of the signal will be affected. sound let's go back let's add the stereo stereo width plugin even if we don't make it wider there's a good oh here's our mono So, as you can see, I um, made it a little bit, not wider, but more narrow, narrower. It was too wide for me, and if it's too wide, it, it can easily lose uh, its punch. Let's do the blind A-B test, A-B. Let's leave it off. It's not that big of a difference, so let's just leave it. Um, finally, let's add the limiter. Dynamics and the air limiter is the, is the, that came with the update. Okay. So we want a ceiling of minus two. We want low frequency mono, that's what we want, that's really important and really good. Let's just make everything under or everything below 
100 Hz Mono. Because it, it just, the, the low frequency shouldn't be too, too wide. Okay, now uh, let's just bring the whole thing up to a certain, uh, to zero. <laughs> Let's try to make the release very uh, fast. So with limiting you have to really make sure that if, it, if you push it too hard the gain it, it will lose its punch so the kick so the kick is normally the first uh, thing that's getting um, that's getting limited and it will destroy or it can destroy the signal of the, of the kick really quickly so just set the ceiling maybe minus two um, the low frequency mono is important and then just of course, make sure that before mastering you have enough headroom, so minus six at least. Um, and then just increase the gain until it, until it doesn't sound uh, good anymore. As you can see we are not reducing. If I set the release time to like the middle, I can hear it loses a little bit more punch. So I'm going to set it to pretty uh, fast. If you're still watching this, congratulations, you made it till the end. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like and some feedback in the comments. And if you feel like this was so helpful that you want to buy me a beer, you can do that. Link in the description. Alright, I'm out. See you in the next one.